Mr Speaker. Uh, Ginny Salisa. Mr Speaker, thank you for the opportunity to contribute to the general debate. We're beginning to see a national party that is in shambles and the splits and divisions are beginning to show, Mr Speaker. We're seeing a government that refuses to acknowledge there is a housing crisis, especially in Auckland. And we hear the Minister of Education saying that she is focused on children, that the policies that she's bringing um, across is apparently because she's all focused on children. But you know what, Mr Speaker? She's not focused on all children. She's focused especially on children that are the privileged children that attend high decile schools. Because when we look at this new policy that she has brought in uh, just last night, communities of online learning, what I see from that is I'm not quite sure how it would actually um, be implemented on the ground for a lot of the young people in Manukau East and South Auckland. I'll give you an example, Mr Speaker. When I go visiting the primary schools, intermediate schools, and many of the high schools around um, South Auckland, many of the young people don't actually have their own devices. Many of the homes that they live in do not have internet access. So how can we expect that the access to this community of online learning is going to be of of equal value to every single student, regardless of where they live, regardless of the socioeconomic status that their parents have, when they themselves don't have access to those devices. That's on the one hand, and that's for the kids and the students who are attending schools. I also see so many, too many of our young people who don't even have a home. A lot of our young people who are living in garages and cars, now not only do they not have access to a device, they don't even have a roof to call um, a home, Mr Speaker. And too many of these young children, they are not even enrolled in a school. So this community of online learning probably will be a good idea for a lot of students, but it won't be um, uh, of equal access to every single student. But let me get back to the splits and divisions beginning to show in the National Party. We also see this um, in the shambolic approach that they have to the shop trading hours amendment bill. And it's a disgrace that we're seeing the National Party whipping their national MPs just to get this Easter Sunday um, bill across the line. We know that this bill has come through debate on Easter Sunday at least eight times before, and it has not passed. When we look um, at the last votes, we see that nine national um, members of parliament voted against this, this bill. They voted with their conscience. I see the list and there are five national MPs who are still here who have traditionally voted against um, the Easter Sunday trading, trading bill. They are probably going to vote yes now because they've been whipped into it uh, by their Prime Minister. And, and Mr Speaker, I am most concerned about two um, MPs on that list uh, in particular, the um, Pacific MPs who belong to the National Party. And this is because this issue is of crucial importance, especially to us Pacific Islanders, those of us who are churchgoers, those of us who are Christians. And, you know, um, one of the National MPs, was a church minister before he came in to being a politician, Mr Alfred Ngaro. And the other um, national uh, MP, uh, Pesata Sam Lutuinga, is a strong Christian. And I know that if they were given the chance, they would vote against this bill, because that is how I believe their conscience would tell them that they should vote. Mr Speaker, it is my hope. There is still time. Third reading is not until tomorrow. I'm told, uh, and my hope is that these two um, national MPs, uh, Sam Lutwinger and Alfred Ngaro, will find it in their heart to vote with their conscience and to vote the right way. Thank you very much, Mr Speaker. The Honourable